Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about powers of attorney. Powers of attorney are a lot like loaded guns. In the right circumstance, they can be very effective and very helpful. But like a loaded gun, they can also be used against you. Knowing what the parameters are on a power of attorney and the different types of powers of attorney is important because they give you some flexibility to do things that you might not otherwise be able to do and to a certain extent to control your own destiny when you aren't available to control it yourself. So let's talk first of all about what a power of attorney is. It is essentially the appointment of an agent. Now, in an agency relationship, there is a principal and an agent. The principal is considered to be in charge at all times. And an agent has no more power than the principal gives him. So, for example, if you have purchased a car in Florida or Alabama or any place like that, you may have been asked to sign a limited power of attorney. And the limited power of attorney is designed to give the dealership the ability to do the paperwork for you to license and register the car. And that can be very, very helpful. But the reason you use a limited power of attorney, in other words, you can only do these things, is you don't want them turning off the electricity to your house or buying a vacation cottage on a beach in Maine. And if you do not have a power of attorney properly limited in scope, if it's just a general power of attorney, somebody can do anything they want with that power of attorney. Up to a point, and I'll explain that in just a moment. A power of attorney should be designed to accomplish whatever task it is that you need to accomplish. So, for example, recently I had to go back to Missouri to appear at an oral argument in a state court. And while I was going to be gone, uh, a CD, a certificate of deposit, was going to come due at our bank. And I wanted my wife to be able to sign my name for me. So I issued a power of attorney which authorized her to sign my CD in my name as if I were there and did it myself. I drafted the power of attorney. It was a limited power of attorney, not because I don't trust my wife, because I would trust her with my life, but a lot of times people claim to be people that they are not. So the bank kept a copy of that power of attorney in its records to demonstrate, of course, that the person who signed that CD had the ability to sign it. Suppose some I had just done a regular power of attorney and someone snatched that out of the file, handed it to their friend who looked somewhat like my wife, and went and tried to do something like buy a cottage in Maine. Well, then you've got a problem. So, that's why you limit the power of attorney. Not because you don't trust your spouse, and not because you don't trust your bank, but banks have employees, and it's not that I don't trust most of the employees, but I don't definitely don't trust the devil in some of those employees. So I always use a very limited power of attorney. And these are not rocket science. You can find these forms on NOLO Press. And there's one that I'm going to show you here in a minute that you can get off of the Missouri uh, Bar's website, and it can be very, very helpful in other matters. But that's what a power of attorney does. It says to the agent, these are your powers. This is what you may do on my behalf. Now, an agent can never exceed the power given to him by a principal. And if they do, for example, if my wife, for whatever reason, decided to withdraw $30 from my savings account for some reason, 
although I wouldn't mind, because she's more than welcome to, that would be an unauthorized use of that power of attorney, and it would technically be a breach of her fiduciary duty as my agent. I also limit powers of attorney in terms of time. Between January 1st and January 11th, you are designated as my power of attorney for the specific purpose of signing my CD during this 10-day period of time that the CD will become due. You may exercise these powers at any time in that 10-day window, but they expire at the end of this 10-day window, and you are limited expressly to signing the documents. It's not that hard to craft one. When you issue a power of attorney, it should be notarized. In other words, it has to be signed in front of a notary, and it has to have a notarial stamp, and you need to get two or three copies of it because a lot of times if you use it for things like buying cars and that kind of thing, they're going to want more than one copy of it. And you should always read the power of attorney very carefully at the dealership to make sure that it is expressly limited. And I think that's equally important. But what happens, uh, let me explain something. First of all, the power of attorney can be revoked at any time for any reason. The principal can just determine that he doesn't want you to act as his agent anymore. And he can say, you can't do that. So because the principal always remains in control, a durable power of attorney expires during any period of incompetency. Now, we don't usually think of incompetency as having a period, but for example, you go in for brain surgery, and as a result of the brain surgery, you have to be in a coma for three or four days. During that period of time, the power of attorney, a simple power of attorney, is not it's not valid. You can't use it because the principal can't revoke it during that period of time. It's not valid during that period of time. And then when the person comes out of the coma and is certified by the physician to be competent again, well, then the, the power of attorney would again be valid. But most of the time, when people get ill, particularly when they have any kind of brain injury, the period of incompetency is usually permanent. And as a result of that, a durable power of attorney is what's required. Now, what is a durable power of attorney? A durable power of attorney is one that goes on past a period of incompetency. So, for example, if you had a car accident and you were on life support and in a coma and the doctors came to you and told you, look, you know, we think that there's no hope here. You would have a power under a durable power of attorney for health care to terminate life support if that's what your person wanted. So, Let's go over now and look at the Missouri website, and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the page from the Missouri Bar for the Durable Power of Attorney for Healthcare. Now, this is valid for certain only in Missouri, but it may be valid in other states if you uh, check with someone who is an attorney in those states. If they believe there is a problem with it, they can fix it but this is a good document to start from. So you can take that to an attorney, for example, and say, this is what I want, and I want it under Alabama law or North Carolina law, whatever it is that you might want. As they note here, establishing advanced directives regarding future health care decisions can ensure that a person's wishes are met and can also relieve families from having to make difficult decisions at a time of great stress. Well, I know from my own personal experience, having worked as a respiratory therapist, that I do not want to be kept in a vegetative state. If my head is not coming back, if my brain is not going to recover from whatever injury I have suffered, then I don't want to be kept alive by artificial means because, guess what? I'm no longer there. So, it would be just fine with me if somebody terminated life support in that situation. 
And as a result of that, in my durable healthcare power of attorney, these are the things that I allow my agent to do. My agent, of course, is my wife. And then I also have my daughter appointed as an agent as well. Now, what's nice about this durable power of attorney for healthcare on the Missouri Bar website is that it features fillable forms. And it says, you know, be sure to read the instructions. If you're not able to complete the fillable form, please right click on the link to the form and choose save link as or save target as, then complete the form after it's been downloaded to your computer. And indeed, you can do that. But let's take a look at the form on the computer now. So up at the top, you put your full legal name, address, city, state, and if you want, if you are into that, you can put your pronouns and your chosen name. For me, I just put, call me Tony. I don't use Tony two toes on this because this is not, <laughs> this is not humorous. This is life and death, realistically. Durable power of attorney for healthcare. If you do not wish to name someone to serve as your decision-making agent, mark an X through part one on pages one and two and continue to part two. So this is part one. So you could mark an X through it if you didn't want to appoint an agent. So you select an agent and you put your name in the first part. I, in my case, it would be Anthony L. DeWitt, currently a resident of Pettis County or Saline County, Missouri, appoint the following person as my true and lawful agent in fact. And I would use my wife and her address and phone number. And if she had an alternate phone number, I'd include that. And then you can appoint a first alternate agent, the person who is next in line if for some reason your initially appointed agent has predeceased you or is not able to make a determination, perhaps because they're simply too distraught. Um, so you put the first alternate agent in, and if you want, you can put a second alternate agent in. And then it says durability. This is a durable power of attorney and the authority of my agent when effective shall not terminate or be voidable or void if I become disabled or incap incapacitated or in the event of later uncertainty as to whether I am dead or alive. So, for example, if you had been kidnapped by a hostile terrorist group, perhaps when you were visiting in Israel, and you don't know whether someone is alive or dead, the durable power of attorney continues to exist. Now, obviously, it, it couldn't be used for any purpose, because if you're missing and they, they don't know whether you're alive or dead, you're probably not coming in for health care. But these are the kinds of things that lawyers put into documents just to cover every base, and I guess we can't blame us for that, um, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyway, it's a durable power of attorney, so it survives your period of incompetency or unavailability. The effective date as to healthcare decision-making, whenever that date is, and you can also have this to trigger on the basis of one physician or two physicians determining if you're incapacitated. So you grant your agent the full authority as to healthcare decision making to give consent to prohibit or withdraw any type of healthcare, long term healthcare, hospice, palliative care, medical care, treatment, or procedure. And then it goes through all of that. I wish to authorize my agent and to direct a healthcare provider to withhold or, with, or withdraw artificially supplied nutrition and hydration. So, tube feeding and food and water. You can authorize that, or I do not authorize. Now, this is important because if you withdraw food and nutrition, you're going to starve to death. Of course, if you're brain injured at the time, you may not even know it. But it is important to realize what the impact of your decisions are, so they put that in there. Make all necessary arrangements for health care services on my behalf and hire and fire medical personnel. It is not uncommon in end of life to reach a situation where you have someone who is a physician who says, no, 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 I, I think we can do more. I, let, let's hold off for a couple of more days before we make any decisions. And then when you go back to them in a couple more days, they want a couple of more days, then a couple more days after that. At some point, if you decide that the end game here is that the patient is being tortured, 
you can simply fire that person and move the patient to another entity if you have a durable health care power of attorney. Take other action necessary, effective data as to the authority, all of that. Now, you can authorize anatomical gifts so that when you leave this veil of tears, you can donate your body to medical science. And I have often thought about donating my body to medical science, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't find it very useful. <laughs> I'm sure I've made way too many mistakes with it to, to be of any particular value. Uh, you, and then there's a provision in here about the agent's financial liability and compensation. And then part two is a health care directive. And this is where you make your wishes known. This is where you want to tell people what it is that you want to do. If I'm persistently unconscious, no reasonable expectation of recovery, you can either initiate or withdraw artificial nutrition, hydration, surgery, antibiotics, mechanical ventilator, all of this. This portion of the document, the health care directive, is merely an expression of your wishes. If you don't have the agency part up on part one, if you don't have that filled out, then all this does is provide a template for the doctor to understand what your wishes are, and it doesn't empower anybody to act on your behalf. So it's always wise to have an agent. And then general provisions, including the durable power of attorney for health care, the relationships, all of that. It's, an, it's a very good form, and then it needs to be witnessed by two witnesses, and then the notary needs to acknowledge it. So that's how you go about creating a healthcare power of attorney. That's what it's used for. And hopefully that gives you some basis for understanding how it is that things work. I would also tell you that the Veterans Administration has a similar form for an advanced directive that includes some agency provisions. And you can probably use that if you know you're going to be uh, using it at a veterans hospital or a veterans home. So that's what I have for you today. Hopefully this has been educational and helpful for someone. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, or if you want, you can email them to me. I'm happy to respond to questions by email too. Have a marvelous day. Do something nice for someone today if you can, and catch me down here at the beach again next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.